Hello everybody, this is Spot of Nerd with a new episode slash podcast slash whatever the hell they call these things nowadays, but yeah, I want to talk about something that's been kind of, I'm not going to lie to you, it's been kind of bugging me um, in relation to gaining supporters, subscribers, etc., so on and so forth, through channels, obviously, influencers, content creators, and I would love to know what y'all think as well. Like, throw it in the comments, let me know your, your thoughts. To be fully transparent, I am very aware of how non-consistent I am with this specific channel you know I'm definitely not somebody that's posting daily videos daily content I'm not even on a lot of it specifically X as they call it now but what really kind of sparked this curiosity slash frustration slash whatever else to call it and uh, you know Call it what it is, sure. Maybe I'm just playing my violin here. The world's smallest violin. But I gotta give mad respect to... There's a YouTube channel I just got into recently. And I highly, highly encourage everybody to go and check it out. It's called London Eats. And again, this is the probably the only... <laughs> you know me. This is probably the only positive thing I'll, I'll kind of speak to in this specific episode. But... It really is an amazing channel. It's about this guy who basically lives in London and he is a delivery driver like Uber Eats and delivers parcels, all those other like, you know, there's plethora of apps and services that, you know, you can have your dry cleaning um, delivered to your door and contracts and obviously food. Uh, you know, McDonald's, KFC, so on and so forth. And again, it just kind of randomly popped up into my feed, thanks to the good old algorithms that do exist. I am not blind to that fact either. And it was really cool. It really is. It's, you know, there's times where he's just doing it in the middle of the night from like 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. Or, I'm um, sorry, uh, 12 a.m. to like 6 a.m. There's times where he's doing it Christmas Eve. And I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's fascinating. It really is fascinating to really get up close and personal in that world. And I think this guy, I can't, I'll be honest with you, I don't really know his name, but again, the channel London Eats. Um, check it out. They're about 20 minute videos. It's the way he edits the videos, the way he kind of does things is really, really cool. And I think it's, it's very engaging. It's very much, you kind of just you're just kind of vibing out to it, you know? It's almost like a walkthrough. So you know how some sometimes you have people that will go through a city, maybe overseas, or, you know, they'll go through Paris. They'll just, kind of what I've done with the San Diego Comic-Con, where we just walk through. Um, that way you can just kind of experience it as if you were just walking through it. So it's similar in regard to this channel where, yeah, this is what it's like to take orders and deliver them. And again, it's just, it's fascinating. It really is. And I give him, I give this guy so much credit. You know, he does it as a side gig, but the frustration comes in and this has nothing to do with the channel or London Eats, but it's like, I swear to you, this guy gets several hundred thousand views to quite possibly just over a million views on some of his episodes. And it just, I don't know, this, this last week, it kind of struck me holy shit, this guy's getting nearly, you know, he's getting several hundred thousand views off of delivering food to people. And I mean, yeah, this is where I got to give, I mean, it's definitely envy and jealousy, whatever you want to call it, because this guy nailed it. He found a niche and he nailed it because clearly there are tens, there's got to be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of delivery drivers and, you know, people out there that do this type of stuff but he decided one day to strap some cameras to his bike or his motorcycle and record it and then put it put together a little clip it's genius it's fucking genius and i i guess i just kind of sometimes look at my own channel and 
yes, like I've said, I am very, very aware of what I do not do. And that is can remain consistent. You know, obviously my editing skills are not the best. Um, some of my stuff is very bland and very similar. Obviously, I don't really change up a lot. And obviously, my excuse to that will be, you know, with work and my health and things like that. And yeah, they are excuses. But I guess what I wanted to get out is just to tell people, because again, I think it's one of those, I'd almost say on an optimistic sense that I would like, if you have an idea like this, go and do it. You know, I mean, if you think about it, I was doing some research as well about the money that you can make by doing something like this. I mean, again, take London Eats, for example, just one video with several hundred thousand likes or not likes, but several hundred thousand views. I mean, you can make good money off of ad revenues through YouTube. And I've only just started to experience that with Rumble specifically. Um, you know, I'm making... I'm actually making, I've made $4 off of Rumble, which is $4 I didn't have before. But again, it's one of those, and it's, it's, I guess what it ultimately comes down to as I kind of finalize this topic is I need to do better and I need to do more with this channel. And I think this is going to be, I have to give credit and thanks to the London Eats channel guy because it's inspiring. It is one of those things where like you can make your own money, your own business, your own benefit in relation to your life financially by doing stuff like this. And all it takes is a camera. Slap it to your bike, slap it to like I do with a with a DJI Osmo and just record something, you know? Or I've thought about even creating separate channels, but I kind of I'm worried I don't really have much of a base here. The fear being that starting a new channel might be just as tough, obviously, with all the censorship that goes on in this world right now, specifically if you have viewpoints that I do. But I mean, just some examples I've thought about is as a podcast or however it might roll, but we'd be like, you know, a conservative living in Seattle, Washington. Um, trademark me. Don't take that. But I'm just saying as an example, I could probably do like a daily podcast, what it's like being a conservative living in the Pacific Northwest. And quite frankly, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It is full of hatred and discrimination from others. Um, and the occasional once a week death threat. It's, it's fucking horrible. And I don't know, maybe it'd be something the world would want to hear. Um, I personally, maybe I will do this. I don't know yet, but something to kind of think about because... I think what it really does come down to as well, I don't want to change things up too much in relation to the nerd channel because we've already started incorporating different aspects. You know, we're not just doing reviews, we're doing politics, real world situations. So I don't know, maybe I can do like a series of type of the stuff like that, you know, but it's something I would love to know your thoughts. And again, please let me know in the comments what you think, um, because I really do want to know, is it something you'd listen to? Is it something you'd watch? That's something else I need to get into. I really need to build some sort of desk area where you guys can start seeing me more. Um, I still won't necessarily worry too much about the editing, but at least that way, you know, you anytime I look at these channels with reviewers, I mean, these guys are wearing t-shirts and jeans and they got a microphone and they're getting, again, hundreds of thousands of views making a lot of fucking money. So hopefully something I can get rolling here because as if you've been here from the start, which, you know, my love and huge support goes out to anybody that has been watching and supporting Spot of Nerd from the beginning. Um, we've been doing this for seven years, if you can believe it or not, and I am truly grateful for every single one of you that supports the channel. I just want it to be bigger. I want it to be bigger and better. And if anything, I hope you'll do it with me. I really do. It's one of the interesting things too with the London Eats channel. There's a video we were watching, one of his first kind of first videos, and he's mentioning I was looking at my own analytics. I got to start paying attention to that because, you know, he was telling folks. 75% of people were not subscribing to the channel, but yet were watching his videos. And he basically says, 
Y'all need to subscribe to this shit. So maybe I also need to be a little bit more firm and kind of let you all know like, hey, I can see that even my own right now, there's probably about 60% of y'all that are not subscribed to this channel. And I, I would almost say, please, please hit that subscribe button, you know, just so I know you're there. Um, I seem to lose more than I gain. It's, it's interesting. It's this interesting wave where I go up and I go down. I go up and I go down. But the downside being is when I do, when I do go down, we go down quite a lot. So um, it's hard to regain that ground that we make up. But um, yeah, it's just an interesting discussion I thought we'd have and topic to, to kind of go over. And hopefully I can give some recognition to this uh, London Eats guy. He's on um, Instagram. I think it's London Eats 10. Um, go to the channel on YouTube. Trust me, London Eats. You can't miss it. And uh, he has all of his information there. But um, yeah, it's just really cool. And I really optimistically, I hope one day I can get there. You know, uh, I don't think it's too late, uh, even though I've been doing this for nearly 10 years. But I just think I need to be better at it. I really, really do. And it's going to be tough. You know, it really, really is. But I do think we can do it, and you're, hopefully you'll bear with me while I figure out what works and what doesn't, and kind of go from there. So, um, Switching gears ever so slightly, I did want to briefly talk about a certain Mr. Russell Brand. Now, if you know Russell Brand very eccentric gentleman very excitable um celebrity movie star and of course now the target as i say as a lot of us are saying now of the usual tyranny and horrible corruption that is currently happening in today's world especially for those individuals that speak out against the government against covid lockdowns so on and so forth so, if you're not familiar with the story, look it up. But it is one of those situations, and let's be very serious. Let's not take this as a joke or anything silly. Any accusations of sexual misconduct, rape, are bad. They are horrible, and they should be. there should be consequences if, if there is truth and validity to it. So... The issue that, of course, many of us are having right now that are seeing this, specifically, like I say, those of us that might be more on the conservative side, this man is being destroyed, and it's, it's, it's a coordinated attack. It always is. Look at Alex Jones. Look at uh, these January 6th individuals that have recently been sentenced. This is a coordinated effort to shut people up that speak against the government and speak against certain things that are currently happening in today's world and it's disgusting it's absolutely disgusting and i've always said this too through sometimes instagram posts it should also scare the living shit out of you um one of my you know my my number one greatest idol greatest fan or greatest person that i really enjoy right now is steven crowder he does the show louder with crowder and he is huge 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 in the social media world and speaking back against the the tyranny of the the major companies that are out there you know uh google and youtube and um everything in between that controls media you know let's be real there's always a narrative there's always an agenda we don't need to go down that road obviously i think a lot of us now are at least aware of what these companies do and how they destroy people. They destroy lives and it's completely one-sided. It's always one-sided, um, specifically when it comes to the politics and agendas or, or narratives. Um, obviously, I've spoken many, many times about it, about certain situations, uh, certain occurrences, so on and so forth. You know, I, I do have to tread lightly sometimes uh, without being disrespectful, etc. Because, no, I'm... I've always said, you do you and I'll do me, as long as you leave the children out of it. Um, but in this instance, with Russell Brand, I think the heartbreaking thing about it and what makes you so mad and frustrated is because there is no evidence. It is simply word of mouth. 
at this moment in time. And they are destroying this man. Newspapers, television, media, they are destroying him over something that we have no idea right now whether or not it is true. Because this is something that was from 20 years ago. Now again, not saying that it didn't happen, not saying anything, you know, in relation to discrediting these individuals coming forward. But why are we destroying people when they don't even have the facts? Or, here's the best part, he hasn't even been subject to a crime yet. They haven't actually arrested him or placed, um, what's the words? There's a word for it where you actually charge. He hasn't been charged with anything. It's simply allegations at this point. And yet the man's world has been tossed upside down. Speaking of which, the you, uh, good old YouTube tyrants have demonetized him. Thank God he has rumble. You know, and again, I, I'm not the, I, I'd be lying if I said I was a big fan of his. I don't really know a lot of his work. I do follow him just recently, of course, in the last few years, uh, especially with his speaking out against a lot of the pharmaceutical companies. The fact that I think it was like the top 10 or 20% of billionaires made the most money of all time in just the most recent years with COVID. Um, I, I admire the guy. I really do. He speaks out. He speaks the truth. He looks into the facts and he's not afraid to do it. And just, I mean, you could predict it from day one. Anytime somebody does something like that, you know they are going to be targeted and they're going to be come after. They're going to be come after. Um, like a Liam Neeson in the Taken or something like that. I will find you and I will kill you or something. Um, again, just to be clear, I do not. No violence. I'm not telling you to do any of that. I don't wish any violence upon anybody. I think it's bad. Just get, get getting that out of the way. But we've got to stop this. We really, really have got... I mean, again, I was watching this week with Louder with Crowder. They were talking about it. Enough is enough. This has got to stop. This has really, regardless of the situation, whether it's accusations of sexual abuse, um, everything in between, this is enough of the guilty until proven innocent is the metaphor now. It's, it's disgraceful. It's disgusting. This country is lost at this point in relation to such things. We are hanging by a thread here. And I know that sounds negative, and trust me, I'm fully aware, you know, of the topics we discuss that can be very heavy, and, you know, we continue to go down this path of what is what is going to happen in the future. I think everybody is scared to death now. We are constantly stepping on landmines. And it's we have to start speaking up about it. We really, really do. Because, again, I do not promote any violence. I would never, ever want violence or hurt, disrespect, hatred towards anybody. But we also have to stop this, you know, teetering around everybody in terms of, will I say the right thing? Will I say the wrong thing? Um, you know, I'm fully aware of we need to respect and appreciate everybody, etc. But come on. Enough is enough. There's no crime here. Yet quote-unquote if there is then yes he should be punished against the law um everything in between but there is no evidence there is no charge there is no crime yet it's simple allegation and again we could take that down many many paths many many topics but the bottom line is I guess I'm, I'm trying to make it sound to where I'm, I'm not going to get myself into trouble. The bottom line is we need to regroup and come back as a society and start talking to each other. Actually, no joke, totally side topic. I just recently watched uh, Batman vs. Superman, and they talk about that. You know, that's how a democracy works. We talk to each other. We stop blaming. We stop pointing fingers. The funniest shit on the planet, too, not to go down that road right now, the uh, Lauren, or I think it's Laura, Laura Bobart, the, the politician that got kicked out of the Beetlejuice thing. Howard Stern, of all people, is telling you how, you know, disgraceful it is to be that politician, yada, yada, yada. This from a man who had prostitutes 
getting orgasms on of, off of subwoofers. Shut the fuck up, Howard. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I don't mean to go down that road, but give me a break. You know what I mean? Um, I do, to kind of wrap this episode up, I do genuinely hope, I really, really do, I hope things are changing. I know it's it's one of those things, it seems like every time we get a win, we get 10, 10 more hits back. And it's 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 that game of the metaphor, the, the rabbit and the turtle, tortoise. It's a slow, we will fight for every inch that we can get. It is a hard battle that we are fighting right now to protect our freedom, protect the way of life, protect our morals and our values um, in relation to a lot of stuff that's going on right now. And I do still believe the majority will, will, will win, ultimately. They will win the fact that people deserve to live the best lives they possibly can. They also deserve to not have to pay $6 for a gallon of a gas and so on and so forth i mean i'm sure we'd go down many paths in that regard but we have to start and i've said this before we have to start speaking out to it and that's it's why i do this channel and maybe going back to the very the very beginning of this episode it is a, probably a lot of the reason why i don't get a lot of attention is because censorship is real i look at instagram i think i've said this before too you know me broken record spot of nerd I used to post a picture and I would get easily 20 to 30 likes on a photo just within minutes. And now I can barely get one or two. And I'm not, I mean, these aren't political posts. These are just, you know, maybe it's just a selfie. Maybe it's just me, you know, in my truck. And I don't get any likes. So you cannot tell me censorship isn't real. Or even on my YouTube channel, like, you know, th there's videos that will get five views because I talk about stuff like we're doing right now. But then if I talk about a review on how shitty Indiana Jones is, I'll get a couple hundred. It's, I know it's all algorithms. I know it's all censored and this and that. It's just, sometimes you just get that frustration and I, that's, if, it's why I do this. So I can get it out and I kind of, I enjoy Getting the feedback from people, positive and negative, you know, as long as it's done respectfully with with a good heart intent, blah, blah, blah. But I hope, if anything, you'll join me. I really, really will to, to maybe just start speaking out a little bit more respectfully, non-violently. Just if, you know, if you feel and if you have a value or a moral that you feel is, is being destroyed or, you know, going down a, a rabbit hole of bad things speak to it speak out do something about it start a podcast start something volunteer whatever it is but you know when that time comes where you you ask yourself how did it get this far it's too late it really really is too late at that point and i i don't think we're there yet i really don't but we're getting close and i pray and i hope that we just never have to get to that point so Enough of all that. I do hope Russell Brand comes through with this on top. You know, Louder, look in the history of Louder with Crowder uh, with Steven. You know, he was just, he went to war with these social media companies and media companies. And it was, I, I've followed this guy for years now. And this man took hits that no one else, metaphoric hits, I mean, from legal aspects to demonetization from youtube blah 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 um and he came out on top and not only did he come out on top he is building one of the largest conservative networks the world has ever seen and is so powerful so big now that he is legitimately changing things for the better you know guidelines at youtube that used to shut down people like us because of him and because of his followers and his channels and his other like you know people on his network they've been able to backtrack it all because the bottom line is and the greatest thing ever that they always say that steven always says they can't censor all of us it just simply is not possible and it's the best thing i hold on to and i live by because there's no way on this planet god's green god's planet you can ever shut us up all up 
you can never shut all of us up. It's just impossible. So hopefully you believe in that as well. I will leave you there. Thank you all so, so much for listening. If you would be so kind, subscribe, damn it. Subscribe to this channel right now. Click that subscribe button right now or a kitten will or a kitten will die in in the sleep in your sleep tonight that's really mean and i'm sorry i don't mean that but you know what i'm getting at ha ha joking 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 so anyway y'all thank you so much we will see you guys next time later y'all